So something I'm wondering about with the Ahsoka show as we move forwards is something that was explained briefly in the Heir to the Empire trilogy, particularly the second novel in Timothy Zahn's trilogy, Dark Force Rising. And as you know, this was the first time that Thrawn was introduced in Star Wars in the very early 90s. I believe this one came out in 1992, but it might be a little bit mistaken. Somewhere around there. In my opinion, this version of Thrawn is the real Thrawn. I think the Thrawn that was written later on by Timothy Zahn, you know, once Disney acquired Star Wars, just feels a little bit different. He's almost kind of like a good guy somewhat, but I just, I liked the original version much more, but that's just me. Anyways, in Timothy Zahn's Dark Force Rising, the Katana fleet, also known as the Dark Force, is the fleet of starships that went missing. And these could potentially be coming back in some sort of way, maybe in the show, because I kind of get the theme or the idea that Dave Filoni adapts a lot of stuff from Legends, but just tweaks it quite a bit, you know, changes the name of things and moves a lot of stuff around, maybe gender swaps if he needs to, or just incorporates it in some different way. He's never right on the nose with it, you know, as if it was like Legends on par, but he kind of alludes to it or incorporates it somehow. Kind of like, for example, you know, I feel like Shin Hattie is kind of like Rain and Balin is kind of like Bane. But, you know, that's maybe just my brain thinking of things. But anyways, the Katana fleet I want to talk about is a fleet of about 200 Dreadnought class heavy cruisers that were linked together with a very sophisticated slave rig system. Now, this was not just a fleet. This was a symbol of what was once considered the future of galactic warfare and strategic domination. And this happened all before the Clone Wars. Just before it, actually. Constructed during a time of relative peace, but ever-present instability, strategists who wanted to make this fleet knew that it wasn't all just about power, but or about having a sizable fleet, but actually optimizing the operation. This hunger for optimization led to the conceptualization and eventual construction of this Katana fleet. Now, in the name alone, Katana evokes imagery of precision, grace, and lethality. Much like the famed weapon of ancient samurai, this fleet was designed to strike with accuracy, governed by a singular hand and intent. Comprising 200 Dreadnought-class heavy cruisers, its size was a marvel to behold. However, It wasn't just the number of ships that was impressive, but how they were designed to function. Let me explain. The heart of the Katana fleet was its groundbreaking slave rig system. This was no ordinary assembly of ships, operating independently under various commanders. Instead, the fleet was interconnected, a single entity with a shared consciousness. Through the slave rig system, the actions of one ship could be mirrored by the rest. Maneuvers, attacks, and strategies could be executed in unison making the fleet move and strike as one harmonious entity. The beauty of this system was its efficiency. A typical dreadnought required thousands to crew and operate, but with the slave rig system, the Katana fleet's manpower demands were a mere fraction of that. From one command ship, a skeleton crew could direct the collective might of all 200 vessels. Just imagine that for a second. Now, the vision here was clear to combine the awe-inspiring power of a massive fleet with the elegance of streamlined control. In many ways, they did succeed. On its maiden voyage, the Katana fleet was a sight to behold, moving through space with an elegance and synchronization that had never been seen before. It was as if the very stars themselves danced to the fleet's orchestrated movements. However, with great innovation often comes great risk. The very strength of the Katana fleet, its interconnectedness, was also its Achilles' heel. While the idea of controlling an entire fleet from a single vantage point was revolutionary, it also meant that any potential threat or malfunction could jeopardize the entirety of the fleet. This vulnerability became hauntingly clear when tragedy struck. Do you guys want to know what took it down? A hive virus, as virulent as it was sudden, infected the crew. Now 16,000 crew members had to man just one ship. The very minds responsible for guiding the fleet through the vastness of space were compromised. In their delirium and psychosis, a blind jump to light speed was initiated without a present destination. The Katana fleet vanished into the unknown recesses of the galaxy. The legacy of the Katana fleet is twofold. On one hand, it stands as a testament to the audacity of its visionaries, who dared to dream big and redefine the boundaries of technological achievement. On the other, it serves as a somber reminder 
of the unpredictable nature of innovation. The story of the Katana fleet is, at its core, a reflection on the delicate balance between ambition and vulnerability, reminding all who venture into the unknown realms of space and technology of the double-edged sword of progress. Now, this virus didn't just incapacitate its victims physically, but it absolutely devastated their minds in a fog of delusion. With the fleet's interconnected nature, a single decision made in the throes of the virus's effects had catastrophic consequences, as you guys can imagine. Without clear intent or destination, the fleet made a blind jump to light speed, and to this day, we still don't know where they are. Now, whispers and rumors about the fleet's location have persisted since its disappearance. Some claim to have seen ghostly silhouettes of the dreadnoughts in uncharted space, while others believe the fleet rests in a yet-to-be-discovered-again region, waiting to be claimed, maybe by Thrawn. The vanishing of the Katana fleet serves as a haunting reminder of the unpredictable nature of both biological entities and the machinery that they command, not to mention not having any coordinates for light speed. Now, how this relates to Thrawn in the book is, as news of its potential whereabouts began to emerge, both the New Republic and the cunning Grand Admiral Thrawn recognized the latent power held within this lost fleet. For the New Republic, reclaiming the fleet meant bolstering their defenses and consolidating their position in the galaxy, ensuring a brighter future free from imperial tyranny. On the other hand, Thrawn, with his strategic brilliance and insatiable ambition, saw the fleet as a tool to further the goals of the Empire, restoring it to its former glory. And this is why I think it would be absolutely brilliant if Dave Filoni were to write something like this that Thrawn finds in this other realm or galaxy or unknown regions wherever he is. Imagine Thrawn returning with the Chimera, or, you know, like something even bigger, and behind him are 200 dreadnoughts. The race to locate and control the Katana fleet in Dark Force Rising is not just about military might, but represents the broader struggle for the galaxy's soul. The fleet stands as a beacon of lost potential, a prize for those in the ever-shifting battle between the light of hope and the shadows of authoritarian rule. Through its narrative centrality, the fleet becomes more than machinery. It's the embodiment of a galactic destiny on a knife's edge. I think while the good guys and bad guys were fighting over the map to find Thrawn, maybe Thrawn has been looking for the Katana fleet this whole time. Personally, I think that would be pretty cool, but I'd love to hear what you guys think. Do you think Thrawn is going to come back with some massive, giant fleet behind him? Or is he going to have to kind of start from scratch and maybe use all of the people who have been playing spy in the New Republic, kind of like we've already seen? That hyperspace ring has got to be for something, so it could be for, who knows, maybe one giant ship, maybe a Pergil, or, you know, maybe a whole fleet of ships. I'm not entirely sure. Maybe they all connect and then go into the docking ring. Either way, Thrawn having the command of the Katana fleet in Ahsoka would be absolutely devastating and would surely bring him to a very sizable power in the galaxy. In fact, I'm pretty sure he would be able to crush the New Republic if he had it. I'd love to hear your thoughts down below in the comments. Thanks so much for watching or listening if you are on Spotify or iTunes today. Have an awesome rest of your day, guys. Thank you so much for tuning in. Catch you in the next one. Until then, remember, the Force will be with you always.